Now that we've looked at connection request policies, let's take a look at network policies. And just as a reminder, connection request policies determine which, so based on conditions, determine which server is going to handle the actual authorization of the request. Now, the network policies are what determines if that request is actually granted or not. And you'll see here we have two policies already con created, connections to Microsoft Routing and Remote Access Server. The policy is enabled, processing order one, but it's a deny access policy. Same thing with this one. So these are two basic policies that start out just denying everything. So we need to add some policies. If we're going to allow access, we need to add some policies that are going to allow access and not just deny access. So let's take a look at how we can do that and what some of our options are. So we're going to right click on Network Policies and go to New. I'm going to create a new policy. I'm going to call it Temp because I don't feel like being creative today. And then we get to set the type of network access server. And this is the same thing as we saw in the um, connection request policies. So it can be unspecified, default gateway, VPN, or vendor specific. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as unspecified. <clears throat> now our conditions is we're going to start seeing some differences. So we can do this based on specific windows groups, machine groups, or user groups. And these can come from either the local user or better yet Active Directory. So I'm going to go ahead and add a user group here. And I'm going to add group the group domain users and check name and we'll give that a second to process and once it figures that out then we'll go on with some of the rest now in when you're setting conditions here all of the conditions have to match in order for the policy to take effect so if let's say we set a condition for all users and then here in a minute, we'll set another one based on day and time. So if it's the right user, but wrong day and time, the policy doesn't match. If it's right day and time, wrong user, policy doesn't match. And if the policy doesn't match, then we keep looking for another policy that will match, or it falls into one of these two kind of default deny all policies. So we've added our groups. Let me go ahead and add another condition here. We're going to add a daytime restriction, and we're going to say that these users can connect between 8 and 5, Monday through Friday. I think I actually have that between 7 and 6, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and do that. So, yeah, right there, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., and we'll hit OK. So now I've got two conditions that have to be matched in order for this policy to take effect. Now, we do have other policies that we can add here. We can add policies about the connection properties. So remember, this is about the access client, their IP address, their authentication type, what EAP types will allow, what protocol they're using, um, what tunnel type or service type they're using. And then we can also set this based on the radius client. And we've said this several times already. Remember, the access client is the device that's requesting access to the network. The radius client is the device they're connecting to and that is actually issuing the request on their behalf. So we can set properties for the radius client, for the gateway, so on and so forth. Okay, so once we're good with the conditions that we have, let's go ahead and click Next. Now this is where we define whether this is granted or denied. So access granted means if they meet these conditions, they'll be fine, they'll get access to the network, otherwise they won't. Now notice this option here, access is determined by user dial-in properties which override NPS policies. So basically this will allow you to deny access to everybody in this group, but then determine this and go to their user account in Active Directory and override it by allowing access. You can, doesn't necessarily mean that you should. But if you need to, you can set a policy and then that allows you to create an exception to the policy, basically. All right, then we have our uh, configuration or authentication methods. There we go. So we can use EAP types, so I can add an extensible authentication protocol, including secured password, protected EAP, smart card, or other certificate. Let me go ahead and add that one. 
And then here I can do less secure authentication methods. So if I have these selected and deselected, then any of these authentication methods will work. If I want to limit authentication methods, then I just uncheck the ones that I don't want, remove them from out here, or whatever. Or I can also extend this on down to unencrypted authentication or allow clients to connect without any authentication method. These two are really not recommended. Uh, even CHAP, CHAP has some real weaknesses. So MS CHAP's probably about the lowest you could should consider going and you might actually want to do a little bit stronger. And obviously the most secure would be doing an EAP with a smart card or other certificate. The downside to that is you might not have smart card readers for all the devices that need them. And Okay, so it's another layer of things, but that gets you out of the realm of just using passwords, and all of these are password-based authentication methods. Okay, let's click Next. So the other thing we can add is constraints. And there are additional, you can see it up here, constraints are additional parameters of the network policy that are required to match the condition request. If a constraint is not matched by the condition request, NPS automatically rejects the request. Constraints are optional. Now, constraints are optional, conditions are not. You have to have at least one condition. But I can add additional constraints here to restrict things if I want to. So I could have done, so you see my day and time restrictions here, I could have, instead of setting that as a condition, I could have put that as a constraint here as well. So let me go ahead and click Next and configure um, all right, another set of configuring settings. I lost where I was at for the moment. So. We can set the radius attributes, we can set different routing protocols that we're going to work with if we want different types of encryption. So if these con if conditions or constraints match the connection request, it grants access, and then these settings are applied. So this doesn't restrict access, this applies settings to something that has had access granted. And then when we're done, this gives us our little summarization here, including our policy conditions, our policy settings, and then we just click Finish to create the policy. And so you'll see that here now. And when we click on a policy, we'll see the conditions, we'll see the settings, and then we can move this up in processing order. Right click and move up. We can move that farther up so that it is processed earlier on. And now we have a way of granting access to our network. Okay, so we've looked at configuring via wizard in a previous video. We've looked at configuring radius clients and servers, connection request policies, and now network policies. So at this point, you should have an idea of how we can use NPS either with a wizard or with manual configuration to configure and grant access to your network. Now, recommendations. We'll deal with accounting which is going to be another important part here in the next video. But let's pause for this moment and talk about recommendations. Now when you are setting this up make sure that you test it thoroughly. So if you're setting up VPN access or 802.1x access, whatever type of access you're setting up, make sure you test it thoroughly. And test not only things that should be allowed access, but test things that should be denied access. So if you are allowing access only at specific dates and times and to specific user groups or based on any other condition, IP address or whatever, try it from those devices that should be and shouldn't be allowed access and make sure you test both because you want to make sure that not only is it granting the access that it's supposed to grant but at this that it's denying the access that it's supposed to deny as well so always make sure that you thoroughly test your nps settings before you go live with it part of that is going to be being able to go into the accounting or the logging and seeing what has been granted, what has been denied. And while you're testing it, you'll be able to see that the policies are being applied correctly. But for that, we need to set up accounting, and that's what we are going to look at in our next video.